The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the January 22nd, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside the Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a slightly mixed bag out there. That mix is really just coming from the semis. They're off 12 points. We'll certainly take a look at those, see what's up there. You got the Dow up 146. The S&P's up 11. The NASDAQ 19. The Russell's up 28. The Tranny's up 246. You got the... Uh, Gold trading down five bucks and change. Silver's off forty three cents and change. Uh, Lights recruit is up a buck twenty eight. Natural gas is off twelve cents. So the thirty year treasury print out one twenty twenty three. That's up twenty three ticks. Now the dollar leading the charge dollar wise to the upside. It's Mercado Libre up one and six tenths percent. About twenty eight bucks, fifteen bucks for Mongob, nearly four percent. Synopsis fourteen bucks, nearly three percent. Monday dot com having a good Monday. It's up nearly six percent, nearly twelve bucks. Asma Holdings ten fifty a ten point six percent. Move to the downside. It's booking holdings off 102, nearly 3 percent. Archer Daniels Mid Midland down 14 bucks, 20 percent. MicroStrategy off 10, 2 percent. Ferraris down nine. That's a two and six tenths percent move. And Advanced Micros off about nine bucks. That's a five percent move to the downside as well. So where do we want to begin? Let's begin by taking like, what's going on around the globe out here. How's the U.S. market doing compared to the other markets? Well, we know we're at a new all-time high with regard to the Dow, with regard to the S&P, with regard to the Nasdaq 100. That's what's across the top out here. So I know conditions inside the U.S. are pretty gosh darn bullish. How about over in Shanghai? No, in fact, a price closed below the bottom of a hammer candle. That says it wants lower price out here. Now, the Nikkei is rallying nicely, but nowhere near its all-time high, uh, uh, which is back in, you know, 1990. But still looks pretty good uh, compared, certainly, to the Shanghai. We take a look at the Hang Seng. It's got no bottom signal here. Looks like it's trading lower. There's no capital. There's no global capital flowing into the Hang Seng. There's no global capital flowing into Shanghai, perhaps into the Nikkei. If we take a look at the FTSE here, nowhere near its all-time high, nor is the uh, uh, Australian S&P 200, nor is the DAX. This is the point. The rally is going on here in the U.S., but it's not really just in the U.S., is it? It's the U.S. indices. It's the U.S. stocks. It's the large cap stocks out there. If you take a look at equity futures, here's the ES, the NQ, and the uh, Dow. ES along the top row, NQ along the middle row, Dow across the bottom row. New all-time highs in terms of the ES mini, in terms of euros, in terms of yen, in terms of pounds. That's all unfolding today. We take a look at the NQ, the same thing out here. New all-time highs today in terms of all four major currencies, the U.S. dollar, the euro, the pound, the yen out there. The only thing that is not a new to all-time high right now is the Dow priced in British pounds. It's a new all-time high in terms of euros and in terms of yen out there. This point, the point that we should understand until across the globe, we start to see sellers out there 
This is the reason why the markets are rising, because capital is flowing into the U.S. You and I are looking at it on this screen out there. If we take a look at the Dow itself, priced in major currencies. Here we can add the Swedish Corona. That's at a new all-time high as we speak. Uh, in Australian dollars, we're at a new all-time high. Uh, it, the, so the Dow equity future contract did not make a new all-time high, but I can see that uh, since I last updated this, the Great British Pound has. Uh, so, again, this is a global rally in the U.S. It is not a global rally across the world. This is a global rally in the U.S. And if, in fact, capital is concentrating here, which it is, we're going to see these markets move way higher than any of us think. That doesn't mean I'm saying they're going to continue to move higher nonstop. We know the dance steps out there, you know, two steps forward, two, three steps forward, one, two steps back, and so forth. We know how to dance out here. Here's the... Uh, uh, this is the Dow price in all those major currencies, uh, which is really where they're concentrated because they want large cap liquidity out there. You can certainly get in some of the NASDAQ stocks. You can get in some of the S&P stocks, but not like the entire index out here. But if you ask about the S&P 500, we're at new all-time highs, dollars, euros, yen, uh, pounds, uh, Aussie dollars, Swedish krona. Pretty darn powerful move that we see going on out there. So that's perhaps the most important thing is to understand the bigger picture and what's going on across the globe out there. Again, as much as there are problems here, there's problems everywhere. If you're inside the euro right now, you're sitting here trying to figure out how do you survive. Even though we've seen a bit of a rally out there, you can't be feeling that comfortable. Maybe you're feeling comfortable if you're over in Europe, and my apology. But really, I think you've got a weak currency, and the index is uh, somewhat uh, weak over in Europe as well. That's why they're all flooding or moving over here to the dollar. It's not the only reason, but it's certainly one of the reasons that they're moving over to the dollar. You know, you get those boots on the ground wars out there go back and study wars wars always lead to inflation uh, usually higher interest rates I know everybody's talking about interest rates going lower but not until the war cools down now we don't have boots on the ground as we speak here in the United States so that's another reason why capital is flowing here so let's take a quick peek let's go run over that's a bigger overview of what's going on now we got the smaller stuff to take a look at right the noise would in essence be the daily time frame charts out here so let's go take a look at what's going on in the ES mini uh, well they actually these are all four future contracts right now the weekly charts are are really important out there so but if you take a look at the weekly the es mini negated its td9 count top last week of course that td9 count top what does price do pulls back test that green oscillator and change line we know that's a bullish condition on a weekly basis the es mini is in a breakout bullish mode the same thing with regard to the nq uh the dow maybe by the end of the week it's still just it had been consolidating with inside its profiles out there and the russell 2000 is now trading above the top of its weekly profile so that is a bullish outcome for it the only real uh issue here for the russell 2000 i see is that price has also found resistance at the top of its profile as green oscillator and change line so if the russell's going to rally it's had a nice rally right up into resistance out there you need to see a close above 1995.70 if you were to get that today it's going to join along the uh, u.s equity futures and not that it hasn't been rallying but really joined the rally because when you close above the top of a profile and a green oscillator and change line you get to break out bullish mode Folks, stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Of course, you can give us a call at 877-927-6648 or send me an email. Send that off early. Steve at TFNN.com. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hope everybody had a, a great weekend out there. Boy, there was great golf, great tennis, great football. Tonight, there's going to be some uh, great uh, tennis as uh, well. Our local Coco Golf is uh, playing. Uh, I'm not sure what time. I, I would think it's after 9 o'clock this evening out there. But in any event, let's do this here. We had a number of requests that came in on Friday that I was unable to get to. And I did uh, get back to each person, let them know that I would cover uh, their request the, this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. Then we'll come back. We'll circle back around to the indices, what's going on, the play-by-plays. We take a look at some of the uh, intraday equity future charts out here. So let's start with Blackstone. This request that came in from Nicholas. His question on Friday was, is it a buy? And I can answer it as of today. The answer is no. Now, the reason I say the answer is no is because prices rallied right up into its sell zone. So the sell zone here for Blackstone, Nicholas, is between the levels of 121.32, 121.12, the high today so far, 121.22. If price were to close above 120. 122.22 out there, a lot of twos. That still is not necessarily a buy signal. In order to really give this thing a buy signal, we need to see a close above its green oscillator and change line. And for the daily time frame, that's at 123.19. Now, what we don't see out here is any kind of a bottom. Oh, whoa, 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 Stevie, hold on a second. There's a daily TD nine count bottom. I looked too quickly. Looked like it. I thought that maybe it had been negated. So this has a TD nine count bottom. Okay. So I would have answered your question on Friday with, yes, it's a buy. Maybe I did. I don't recall. Oh, I did, I think, in an email. But I said, we'll cover this. I, I think I might have suggested a little bit of caution here. But I, I, I can't completely recall. But I would have said on Friday it's a buy because of that TD9 count. The reason I'm saying it's not today is because you've already traded up in resistance. If this is only a counter trend move, and I don't know if it is, but if it is only a counter trend move, this is where price would stop. It would be really between the 121... 121.32 and the 123.19 level. On a weekly basis out here, we have price that's running into a potential resistance as well. That's its weekly oscillator and change line. Again, another reason just for you to be cautious here. The monthly chart looks okay, but it's really the daily that needs to resolve itself. And I don't have a great, I don't have a really clear signal as to which way it will do that. Now, we do see a series of higher lows out there. And as long as that remains in place, that looks pretty good. Now, I would think because we're up at resistance and because Nikita case of Blackstone, it's had what will appears to be a three consecutive day rally that we could easily see a one to two day pullback in it 
Uh, so that's what we're looking at, Nicholas. You've got this trading right up into resistance. No idea how it's going to resolve itself there. But those are the areas for you to be watching. Let's go to our second request, and that came in from Eddie. Eddie was really more concerned or questions I had really about these next two instruments, about the weekly time frame, A to B equals CD pattern. So I'll switch over and we'll take a look at that. But before I do that, Eddie, NVIDIA which is the one of the ones that you requested or had requested that we discuss out here is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top today. It's been on one heck of a, of a uh, move. The uh, weekly chart is not showing any signs of weakness, nor is the uh, monthly chart. In fact, they're showing signs of strength out there. But the daily chart, you'll want to watch tomorrow's activity for sure. So I don't know what the end of day high is going to be. At the present time, the high inside of NVIDIA is 603.31. Let's assume that's the high. We'll just pretend that that's the high. The price closes above that high tomorrow. This TD9 count gets negated and tells you about a strong upward move to the upside. You also wanted to take a look at NTNX, which I'm going to just pop up on the screen before I change screens out here. And we'll see that in the case of NTNX out here, that this is, is also going to complete a TD9 count top today. So this is suggesting that it should pull back. Now, its retracement should pull back to its oscillator and change line, 52.47, about a $3 or so move to the downside. No idea how long you've been in this or what have you. The weekly chart looks very good. Why? Because it's negated a TD9 count top out there. Uh, the monthly chart is not showing any signs of weakness out here. So it's just the daily. So both for NVIDIA and NTNX, which is Nutanix, you want to really pay attention to those. So now let's switch over to the black background screens because I can draw draw in an accurate A to B equals CD pattern. And that's what Addy had asked about. And he's really focused on the weekly time frame. So I'm just simply going to open up that screen. And we take a look at A to B equals CD patterns out here. I only see one that exists. And that's this one out here. For the A point, it looks like I would use, let's see, what's that low is? 1351. This is 1344. So it's going to be the low. This is a daily, a weekly time frame. But we're looking at the week that uh, began June 13th. That's our A point. So let's get that pushed in there. Our B point, very easy to find and identify. That's going to be the high from December the 12th. And then our C point was a retracement down into low that formed in April, April 24th of 2023. You can see that Nutanix is up at the 1 to 1.618 A to B equals CD pattern out there. If we take a look at the expansion of its last set of swing points, kind of curious to do that, that's really going to be from the high on a weekly basis of September 6th of 2021 down to that low that identified that A point for the A to B equals CD. So the one point, we're trading above the 1.272 out there. That's the expansion. If price can overcome 56.18, that's 1.618 a to B equals CD expansion, you should see a, you should see a price move up to the 6384-ish level. Now, in Tom's book, you start to get that 1 to 1.618 A to B equals CD, you really start to anticipate a top. Now, in this case here, for a weekly basis, you would need a bearish reversal candle to confirm that signal. So on the daily time frame, you got that TD9 count that's going to complete today. Again, watch today's high, or to, watch whatever today's high is, watch that tomorrow and the next day, it closes above it. Today's high so far, 55.78 would negate that signal and suggest a further rally. Let's go take a look at, uh, it was uh, Blackstone, BX is the ticker symbol. Let's pull that up. Again, let's focus on the weekly time frame out here. Give Eddie the A to B equals CD patterns. The one that I see that is the most likely on a weekly basis out here, the A point is going to start down at the low from the week that began December 26 of 2022. The B point is going to be September 18th of 2023 and a retracement down into October 23rd. You can see that price hit the one to one level. Notice how price is along the left side of that C to D leg. It's on the inside. That tells us about a super strong move when we take a look at Blackstone out there. Now we have we can see that price is pulled back. But has it done more than pulled back? Well, the answer to that question uh, wasn't BX. Ah, oh, shoot, it's NVIDIA. Stevie, wake the heck up, would you? Sorry about that. Let's go to NVIDIA. Oh, good. Luckily, Stevie's got the A to B equals CD pattern drawn in here. Or do I? Because if you take a look at this, this is the only logical weekly A to B equals CD pad that we've got to the upside. And you can see that its retracement is only a 28% retracement. You know we like to get a 0.382 retracement or more, or more out there. Well... It still somewhat qualifies, I suppose, as an A to B equals CD pattern. If you take a look at this B point, B point had 431 million shares. It was passed with only 289. And then last week, 195. So even on the weekly time frame, as strong as NVIDIA has been, 
But when it comes to the A to B equals CD pattern, it hasn't taken out a swing point. But the only one that I could find for you, Eddie, is this one here, and that's what it gives you a price projection up to 786 out there. I think that's what you might have come up with as well. Just be on the lookout. You've got that TD9 count on the daily time frame. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, Nicholas with BX, Eddie with NVIDIA, and Nutanix out there. McGuppy had a request. Take a look at LAC. So let's get that up on our screen out here. For that, we're going to switch over to the white background screen. See, I caught myself. So we get back to this break out there, you'll see LAC. And that's from McGuppy inside the Tigers. And of course, I'd love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648 or Steve at TFNM.com. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding the reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, back up, folks. We got the charts up here for LAC. That is Lithium Americas Corp. This is for McGuppy inside the Tiger Center. It's looking for a long term buy point. Well, McGuppy, your, your hair on the back of your neck must be standing up. Why? Because this month is going to confirm a TD9 count bottom. 
Uh, the pattern will complete next month. That says the bottom could come in anytime between now and the end of next month. When we look at the weekly chart, a TD9 count bottom is going to go ahead and confirm this week. That is unless we have some kind of extraordinary rally. When I mean extraordinary rally, like up to 650, this is trading at 450 right now. Not a likely outcome. So you're going to get a confirmed TD9 count bottom in the weekly. Again, that will complete next week. The daily time frame has got nothing to assist us, but that's the key. You're looking for some type of turn on the daily time frame chart to then signal that perhaps the weekly TD9 count or the monthly TD9 count is in place out here. You may have to take a couple of stabs at this. I don't know uh, at this stage here, but I'd wait for something in the daily. I'd, I'd, you'd love to see some type of bottom pattern. Today is going to become bar number six. It looks like it could. So maybe this will form some type of TD9 count bottom between what is it? Uh, today would be bar number six, so seven, eight. Uh, we'd be talking Wednesday through Friday of this uh, week out there. So continue to pay close attention to it. I would say at a minimum, when I just look at that daily time frame chart, I don't see the highs of a prior candle, a close above the high of a prior candle since it takes all the way back to December 26th out there. So that could be something for you to uh, take a peek at out there. That at least be some type of signal of at least a potential change in trend. So that's what I see when we take a look at Lithia. Lithium, America's Corp out there. Thanks so much for waiting the uh, weekend there, McGuppy. We had a request from David in Panama City. And David's got the uh, calls for Intuit. He's got the calls that expire uh, uh, this coming uh, week, January the uh, 26th out there. So let's try to assist him. And he's asking the question, if price is able to take out the swing point, that's a December 28th swing point that has volume of only about 680 thousand shares so far today in Intuit you have done 186 thousand so 200 about 600 it's a similar type vol actually looks to me like light volume David so you've probably identified that at this stage here now what price needs to close above is to take out that high is 631.07 we're at 639 631 right now give me a I just want to make sure I don't have any kind of delay they, all the delays should be fixed yeah, 631.02 is what I've got on my other screen, 631.03 here. So we're good. I know this one's uh, so perfect. So first price, you got to take out that swing point. If you look at the weekly time frame chart here, what we can see, David, is price is right up at resistance as well. That's the top of its weekly profile. So 631.07 is the top of the profile. That's a swing point that price is trying to uh, take out there, albeit on lighter volume right now. The monthly chart for Intuit shows that uh, a TD9 count, is likely to form between January and March. I know that's a big, you know, time frame out there. Look, we are what what took place today as price spiked above that high hasn't taken it out. Trade looks like it's trading about out uh, trading above it as we speak right now. What it did on the weekly time frame was it generated a uh, triggered a wave number seven. Uh, candle uh, bar out there. Of course, that needs a lower high. That means the earliest would be next Friday before that could confirm out there. So I believe your question is, what's the upside potential out here? So the upside potential would have to be, I'd have to say, it'd have to be the swing point on the monthly basis from November of 2021. Now that swing point, the low, which were already above 603.56, that had volume of 34 million shares. When we came into it, we closed inside that last month and we did it with 26 million shares closed inside a swing point that had 34 million shares. So again, light volume there. Nonetheless, you're inside that swing point. The upside price objective here, before we go any further, would be in that 716 range out there. So in order to see that, I would say that today, today, tomorrow, whenever, you need to see a close above that high, 631.07 out there. Now, if you were to test it, and close below 627.18 and do it with less than 680,000 shares, that would say, okay, get ready for a retracement either to 621 or 603.91. We don't have those conditions right now. Everything looks good with regard to Intuit. If I look at a 30 minute time frame chart for Intuit, we're not seeing any, I take that back. We've got a TD9 count top. Perfect. So this will help you answer this question just simply by watching the stock patterns out there. Now, we don't have anything bearish. 
to report other than a TD Nikau top in the daily time frame. What I really mean by that is prices above profile, prices above its green oscillator and change line. So the 30 minute time frame chart, although it has a top, it's really a neutral signal. It would not become neutral if there was a 30 minute close above 632.44. So if you get that, you're probably back off to the races up towards that monthly high out there. That's what I see, David, when I take a look at that. Hope that helps you out. If not, right back. Let me know what else you're looking at or what else I can provide to you. Happy to do that. Mimi wants to take a look at the USO. So in order to do that, we really need to take a get light speed crude. We'll do that. Uh, light speed crude turns out that USO, as we speak right now, Mimi, 100% of it is inside the March contract for light speed crude. That'll change over the coming days or week out here. But right now, we can just look at the March contract. That's a beautiful thing. Now, the March contract for light speed crude is consolidated with inside its monthly profile. The same thing inside the weekly profile. The same thing inside the daily profile. You kind of get a hint out here, Mimi. Light speed crude is doing nothing more than consolidating out there. So what does that mean? That means if you want to buy a consolidation, you do it towards the bottom. Turns out the bottom of this consolidation is more likely in about the 69.70-ish to 70.37 area. That's the bottom of the weekly profile, 70.37 that is. It writes now price is getting ready to target its sell zone. So the sell zone out there is between 75.48 and 77.52. That is the March contract for light sweet crude out there. Intraday-wise, I see a five-hour TD9 count top that is in place as we speak right now. Nothing else of major significance that I see. So you are running into resistance out there. Now, let's switch panels of my charts and go take a look at USO specifically, since that's really what you asked for. So we'll get over to those here. Those are going to be on the left-hand side. You've got that March contract. But here I've got the USO for the daily and the weekly time frame. On a weekly time frame, your next resistance area is up at 70.29. That is its red oscillator and change line. If price were to test and reject that, close back below it on a weekly basis, that would be a somewhat bearish signal and suggest that price would pull back to test other areas of support. Mimi, those would be 69.34. The price were below 69.34, 66.59. Um, USO is trained above all profiles. So if I had just only looked at USO because we know the directional correlation, we also know that the only instrument inside of USO, well, not the only instrument, the only futures contract with regard to crude oil is the March time frame. And that has a different set of profiles than ones that we looked here. So even if you so if you trade these vehicles uh, and you know you've got that correlation, you've got that, that, that what's included inside it is the futures contract, it's best to gain access to that futures contract. I'm not asking you to, to trade the uh, crude oil futures contract, but I am asking for you to do that if you want to get a better understanding of what's going on and what action you should or shouldn't take out there. Um, and not that Lights we crude can't take out the 7548 level to 7752. It most certainly can. But we can see Mimi price has gotten up there. It's tested. It's rejected that area. There's no way I'd have you enter a long trade inside of USO right now. Knowing that we're trading at 7457, the lights we crude at 7548 is a resistance. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're rolling right through these requests out there. Thank you each for uh, for uh, providing me with requests. Just makes this show makes it easier for me to provide you with the information that you're looking for. So XPEV, XPeng uh, ETF out here. This is a China -y something or other. Um, it's got an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. That one to one price projection would get you to eight dollars and thirty four cents out there. This thing negated a TD nine count bottom, so it suggests that it wants to head lower as price approaches the eight thirty four or lower area. If you were to see a bullish reversal candle, that would be your buy signal into this. Now, do not use a gap. Um, as a buy signal, as a bullish or a bearish, uh, because this has uh, got a number of gaps out there, and I'm assuming it's because of currency translation. The weekly chart has got a TD9 count bottom. It's going to go ahead and confirm this week, and it'll complete next week. So that says you're near a low. Right now, the monthly chart is sitting right at support. That's the bottom of its monthly profile out there, and that's at $9.12. So that's what I'll be watching for with regard to XPEV. Uh, we had a request from Duncan Steve to go take a look at the QQ. QQs out here. And so let's do it uh, both ways. When I say both ways, let's go take a look at the Qs because uh, I think one of the requests would be to take a look at A to B equals CD patterns because they are all over the place. So let's look at QQQ series ETF out there. Here we can take a look at the different A to B equals CD patterns. Let's start with the large one, the gigantic one. This is the monthly time frame chart. I would ask you, where would you start the A point on this pattern? Because somebody could come all the way back and say, you know, Steve, oh, the A point is the 2008 low. Yes, the Q's bottomed in 2008, not in 2009 out there. They made their lows in November of 2008. That could be one. We could also come back here and say we could choose maybe the low from March of 2020. That would make some sense out there. We could use a low out here from December of 2018. What I would say the best thing to use when you get confusion like this, um, I would say one of the best things to do is take a look at the expansion of a set of last set of swing points out there. So I take a look at the monthly time frame chart out here, Duncan. I'm going to start with the high that's been taken out, the November 2021 high, and take it all the way down to the low out of the October lows out here. And what we have is a 1.272 Fibonacci expansion that would get us up into the 450 area. So I think that's the first thing to take a look at. Now let's go take a look at the weekly time frame chart. This is for the Q's ETF. Here as I pull this back, 
back, you'll see that I've got rising price channels that take us uh, back pretty far out here. Uh, actually, I guess I, this was the pr rising price channel from March of 2020 out there. So as I take a look at those price channels out here, we are above uh, the center, uh, uh, or we're above the top of, of the first rising um, up, uh, a channel line out there. And then that price, that, that's solid green line, that's the exact distance of the, uh, first, the first two lines out there. So that gives us quite a price projection. But here, it's pretty easy to draw in an A to B equals CD pattern. We don't have to worry about going back to 2009. Instead, what we can do out here, Duncan, is take a look at the low out here. This is the A point, October of 2022. The B point out here is going to be the high from July of 2023, and the C point's gonna be a low out here of October of 2023. Now that's close to a point three, uh, three eight two. It's actually 34% retracement out there. But this one-to-one, -one, and the B point out here, by the way, it had volume, this is the volume from uh, July 17th, 282 million shares out there. When this was passed, it was passed with 232, 254, 216, 209, last week, 228. So how about that? That B point volume still out here it has been passed with volume. Doesn't mean that it can't go on to complete that one to one. But the price projection out there, Duncan, would get us up towards that 476 level that would get us up towards that next rising price channel line. And finally, let's look at the daily time frame. In the daily time frame out here, we've got a small A to B equals CD pattern. For that, what we can use, you can use a couple of different ones. Let's look at the larger one in the daily time frame. The large one is going to use the swing point from October 26. The B point is going to be the high from December 28. The C point is going to be the low from January 5th. That's also less than a 0 0.382 retracement out there. Hmm. So that's kind of a bummer, right? It is for Stevie because if you don't get a 0 0.382 retracement, it says, well, what else do you have? But where's that one-to-one -one take us to? And how about the volume aspect of that? Well, the volume was at swing point of December 28th, shortened trading week of 27 million shares, taken out last week with 70 million shares. So that certainly was taken out with volume out there. That price projection would get you up to 465 out there. However, and I do mean however, why do you mean however, Stevie? I mean, I'm going to go ahead and put the cues. I should have done that before. I didn't, but we're going to do that now. We're going to go ahead and change screens out there. We're just going to take the cues, see what other signals that Duncan needs to be aware of other than just the A to B equals CD patterns. Turns out that on the daily time frame, Dunk, we've got that Rosemont indicator signal. And if we were to get a bearish reversal candle, that would trigger a, a, a Rosemont indicator top, suggest price pulling back to 415.97. Weekly time frame is bullish as can be. Last week, Negate in the TD9 count top says it wants that higher. Both the weekly, the daily, and the monthly each have roads, roads meant to minus indicator signals out there. That is, you know, be careful because that is a rubber band that stretched. That's the cool thing about the roads momentum indicator signals because those get stretched. And when they do confirm out there, you can see gigantic moves. In this case here, it could be a gigantic move to the downside. Is that what's likely going to happen? I'd have to define gigantic. Right now, we don't even have to answer that question because we don't have the signals to suggest that that is what's going to unfold out there. So I would say with regard to the cues, Duncan, the most important thing to be watching right now is that daily time frame. If you were to get a bearish reversal candle, then we'd have to say, hmm, what else is going on? For example, is that possible today? It most certainly is. Why is that even possible, Stevie? Well, on the 30-minute time frame, the cues have topped at an all-time high on their 30-minute chart with a TD nine-count bottom. Now, what price is going to need to do to suggest to you and I that there's any traction to the downside is close below 416.28 out there. Right now, we're still above profile. We're trading just above its green oscillator and change line. So the 30-minute signal has actually been neutralized as we speak right now. So I hope that gave you the analysis you were looking for on the uh, cues out there. I know you also had a request to take a look at KO, Coke Coal out here. Let's see if we can find where Stevie put that. That's not it. Maybe it's right here. Is this it? That's not it. Oh, I did do the cues. What was Stevie thinking? There we go. So now we take a KO out here. We've got this trading out at 59.64. It's above profiles. It has a TD9 count. It has a Rosemont indicator top out there. You know what that suggests? That Coca-Cola wants to move back to further support, which is at 59.16, Steve-O. So that's the place I think Coca-Cola is headed to. On a weekly basis, we're trading below profile resistance at 59.82. So that supports the idea of a further pullback. On the monthly time frame chart, we're just consolidating 
consolidating with inside his profile levels out there. So, uh, and you're right at the center, so that's at a resistance area. Uh, so I would say you're yeah, looking at a pullback towards 59.16. Now, on a 30-minute time frame out here, what do we have? Yeah, the TD9 count top price below its breakout level of support at 59.72. So that's ushering the idea of a further move lower. So I hope that provided the information you were looking for for Coca-Cola. We had a request to take a look at EGY. Uh, that was from HD. He wrote in, and he's looking for a uh, long position out here. So um, we get back from this break. We'll try to figure that out. I don't see a bottom pattern as we speak on the daily time frame you do have on the weekly time frame hd price pulling back into its bullish structured support zone or buy zone that's between 406 and 421 out there we come back to this break we'll further look at egy steve rose with tfn be right back You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. .com. Welcome back, folks. We're still looking at the charts here for EGY. That is uh, Valco Energy. And the question uh, that uh, has been put to us is, where is a long-term uh, buy? So I'm going to come back and tell you I would look at the 406 area. So the monthly chart is trading below profile, below its oscillator and change line. So that suggests a uh, potential possibility of pulling back to there. We're trading below profile and a red oscillator and change on the daily time frame. So that's what I think we're looking at out there. The other area you can watch out here may be the low of a few days ago, that hammer candle. 
from the 17th out there. You know, if you close below that low, which is 413, that suggests lower price out there. And that 406, which is that bottom of that weekly profile, is what really sticks out to me. So I hope that helps you out. A quick peek in at the Sox. That was the only index that was trading the downside. When we began the show out here, uh, it is trading the upside now. So we got everything traded to the upside. Now, in the case of the semiconductor, they do have a wave number seven signal. That is letter G. They have a Rose Momentum Indicator signal out there. So that says a bearish reversal candle would identify at least a short-term top. Short-term top because the weekly negated is TD9 count top, but still has a Rose Momentum Indicator signal out there. So some eyes look uh, very strong out there. But the daily says perhaps caution over the next couple of days out there. Finally, let's close out the show by taking a look at the ES Mini. Let's look at its intraday charts. What do we have out here? What pops out to Stevie is the 30-minute time frame chart. And the 30-minute time frame chart has got that Rhodes Mentum Indicator top. And it put, pulled price all the way back to its breakout level at 4487750. So if that level fails, if we start to see close below that, then you've got, well, it just depends on what profiles might form. The two-hour time frame chart has a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. The five-hour chart still has a TD9 count top, but only gets negated with a close above 48.8750. We have not seen that on a five-hour time frame. So there's reasons to simply be cautious out here. Maybe just a normal couple-day retracement. Maybe it's more than that. I don't know at this stage here. But right now, the ES Mini says caution on the five-hour, caution on the two-hour chart, caution on the 30-minute uh, time frame chart, and watch at 48.7750 level. Folks, thanks so much for joining me on Magnificent Monday. Please have a great day, and I'll look forward to seeing you again on Terrific Tuesday. Take care, folks.